In this video, I am going to give you a brief overview of three anatomy of hair. Now, uh, in this, we'll talk about just superficial parts to give you a better perspective of the anatomy. Now, actually, it is uh, an organ of hearing imbalance, and an overview, uh, we can have the external ear, which is consisting of a part attached to the lateral aspect of head and the canal canal leading inwards as you may see the lateral part the canal leading inward and then we have as you can see the middle ear let me zoom it for you now in the middle ear it is a cavity actually in a petrous part of a temporal bone which i will show you now in a few minutes it is bounded uh, laterally and separated from the external canal uh, by membrane connected internally internally to a pharynx by a pharyngeal tympanic tube all right it is separated by tympanic membrane the middle ear is separated to external ear by tympanic membrane all right and then the third part is what we known as internal ear it is consisting of series of cavities as you may see here the semicircular canals here we have cochlea all right uh, it is also within the petrous part of temporal bone uh, between the middle ear laterally and the internal acoustic meatus laterally uh, sorry medially now uh, it was a brief uh, description now we next part which we say the hallux all right and this part is known as anti hallux this is concha part all right and this is tragus this part is called as tragus so and this is anti tragus tragus anti tragus and this is ear lobule so this is skin all right then this is uh, fatty tissues connective tissue that we call and this is temporal uh, muscle then we have temporal bone now uh, just to give you a better orientation i will uh, show you a diagram of skull now here we may get a better orientation now it is external or acoustic meatus now it is a bony part only all right and this is actually the petrous part which we uh, were studying that the consisting of middle and internal ear you may also refer your book for better this is the axial caustic meter as you may see all right now coming back to that now having said about the cross sectional area now this is the temporal this is the mid, uh, middle cranial fossa actually so uh, above it the temporal bone internally we have middle cranial fossa and these are uh, external uh, caustic meters all right you may see that the some part is uh, bony sorry bony and other lateral part is cartilaginous so the ear is based on obviously the cartilaginous framework on which the whole structure is made now this is uh, this was the introduction about of uh, external caustic meters connecting now to the middle ear now we have now entered the middle ear all right now look carefully the concave part of the tympanic membrane as you will see that the concave part is facing laterally all right see the concave part such a clear view you can never imagine and the convex part is facing medially so it is now easy for you to understand now uh, it connects to the internal ear with three bones first is male malleus bone and this is incus part all right and this is stapes bone which uh, uh, connects to the oval window to the to the semicircular canals here you may see the which is the vestibular system of the body connects with vestibular cochlear nerve the hearing and balance both so it carries the balance function and it carries the connecting through the whole round window it carries the function of hearing uh, cochlear takes a part of hearing now here it is cochlear right you may see it and here it is vestibular part all right now this uh, you may now see the better view of the cross sectional actually they are bounded in the bony labyrinth so all right so we are seeing only the membranous labyrinth actually it, there is a complete framework of bone which is you may see the cross, cross section of that to give a better perspective now coming to the nasopharyngeal uh, pharyngeal tympanic tube which connects the middle ear to the nasopharynx all right so in uh, sometimes in children we may all in adults also we may get uh, middle infections coming from the nasopharynx so this is the reason this is internal carotid artery internal jugular vein all right so uh, in just to give you a bigger view uh, 
so you may here see the tympanic cavity all right now above it we have a tegment tympani connecting so since some diseases and fracture of that we may get some bleeding all right that was clinical part and so anterior it is pharyngeo tympanic tube and posteriorly it connects to the mastoid part as you will see that in coming videos how it connects to mastoid i just try to give you a brief overview uh, so now, uh, just to tell you more about muscle this is levator villi palatini muscles connecting the this part to the soft palate part so which helps to uplift the soft palate to prevent swelling uh, in the windpipe and this is pharyngeo tympanic tube as we have discussed and this is the little muscle which is very important to in preventing the tympanic membrane rupture when excessive waves are carried out so here from waves are transferred to the tympanic membrane from bones the ear ossicles from it is transferred to the uh, main part of the internal ear where it is processed and carries the sensation to the brain so the, just a wait just wait now you may have the complete view and you may pause the video any time when you feel to zoom it uh, to see it particularly so this is the medial part this is lateral this front part all right and this that is that's it thank you for watching this video goodbye